and welcome to our pioneer medical program, Dr. El Arab. Here is the only place where you can find answers to most concerning medical questions. And you'll find many advices and consultations from doctors who are really efficient and experts in their fields. All that to get your healthy life even better with Dr. El Arab. Welcome back. I'm really so glad that today for hosting the consultant of neurosurgery, Dr. Ahmad Zahran. Hello, Dr. Ahmad. It's really great having you in the studio. Hello, Maro. So, uh, at the first, let's discuss that thing which in common with us and um, really painful. I'm talking here about the headache. So, please tell me uh, what are the main reasons for headache? Yes. Headache, as a, as a word, means headache or pain in the head. This has many causes. All right. um, as you know, the skull has uh, uh, lots of structures, including the brain and blood vessels and muscles and lots of things. So uh, when we talk about the headache, what's the most common cause of headache above all? Mm -hmm. It's the tension headache. I what see. happens in tension headache? You spend most of your day at your work. You have some sleepless nights. Mm -hmm. You... Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, you keep, uh, you stay for a long time watching the TV or watching your mobile. Mm -hmm. Then some muscles of the scalp, the head muscles, they contract, and you feel that there is a tension band around your head. This is what we call tension headache, and this is the most common cause of headache. This type of headache is very simple: just relax and mm -hmm. sleep, and have some minor analgesics, and everything will be okay. At this time, uh, as a patient. Uh, should uh, should uh, take it serious and consult a neurosurgeon? In case of tension headache, no. If it's mm -hmm. just minor headache, no need to consult a neurosurgeon. But not, not only neurosurgeons that could be consulted in headaches. Some headaches are because of vision problems. Some people have errors of refraction. They need to make new glasses mm -hmm. or LASIK surgery. They have to consult ophthalmologists. Mm -hmm. Other problems of headache are the sinusitis, inflammation of the nasal sinuses. You mm -hmm. have to consult ENT. Some patients with Teeth problems, they have to consult a dentist because dental problems can cause headaches as well. Mm -hmm. But when to consult a neurosurgeon, some types of headaches are, are very serious and very important that you should consult a neurologist or a neurosurgeon. For example, the migraineous headache, this mm -hmm. type of headache, the pulsating headache that occurs in or and around the eyes, mm -hmm. causing devastating pain for the patients. This cannot be treated just by sleeping or relaxing or just simple medications. They need special types of meds. These can only be prescribed so by, uh, by uh, neurologists or neurosurgeons. Okay. And of course, there is an, uh, an important type of headache that I should tell everyone about. And it's concerned for my specialty, the neurosurgery. It's the headache of increased intracranial tension. Okay. So you want to talk uh, more about the uh, uh, increased the intracranial tension yes, headache? Yes, the headache of increased tension is very important type of headache. It's so different from other types of headache, like tension headache or migraineous headache or other cause. Mm. As we know, the skull is a closed room. What's inside the skull should always stay the same. Mm -hmm. Any increase that occurs in the volume of the constituents of the skull, the brain, blood, CSF, any increase the, in the volume of the constituents leads directly to increased mm -hmm. intracranial tension. Mm -hmm. What are the symptoms of increased intracranial tension? Patients come with severe headache, mostly in the forehead, frontal headache. It increases with leaning forwards. Mm -hmm. It increases with, uh, uh, it awakens the patient from sleep. Wow. It's accompanied by nausea, vomiting, and sometimes blurring of vision. Mm -hmm. If patients have these symptoms, it's, it could be a sign of increased tension. What are the causes of increased tension? Some of them are just benign causes, no problems, but some other causes are very serious, like hydrocephalus, accumulation of CSF inside the brain, or brain tumors, of course. So, according to brain tumors, uh, nowadays doctors keep saying, keep saying to their patients, uh, don't worry, uh, the surgery will be easier than before, uh, thanks to technology. So, please, uh, let us know more about the new techniques uh, in uh, surgeries for brain tumors. That's a good question because, of course, when you hear that anyone has a brain tumor, of course, it's shock. And everyone gets a bit 
uh, um, afraid, scared from, of of, from brain tumors. But um, advances in neurosurgery every day is concerned about performing brain surgeries mm -hmm. with the least possible complications. Mm -hmm. All technologies are working on two things. How to access the tumor with the minimal uh, uh, incision and how to accurately excise the tumor, or remove the tumor without affecting hmm. the brain tissue around it. Mm -hmm. So new techniques like uh, the neuro monitoring, neuro navigation uh, uh, techniques, it helps us to accurately, precisely define where the tumor is and directly access the tumor and helps us to, to differentiate between the tumor tissue mm -hmm. and the normal brain tissue so that we can work only on the tumor tissue and leave the normal brain tissue alone. Other techniques like, for example, the endoscope. The endoscope is a long stick with a camera in front. This stick, this small stick, can go into small holes, like, for example, the, nas the, nasal, the nasal cavity. And from the nose, we can access the brain. Mm -hmm. This was actually invented by ancient Egyptians. You Seriously? Know? Ancient Egyptians, they, during the, uh, after the death of, uh, of the Egyptians, the uh, the, the used to go from the nose mm -hmm. and remove all of their brains. The first endoscopic surgery done in history was done by Egyptians. So now, mm. nowadays, we perform surgeries on the brain, on pituitary glands in the brain, we perform it by the endoscope. So every day, new technologies, brain surgeries are becoming much easier. They are still, of course, serious surgeries, but every day complications are less and more patients can uh, uh, um, uh, return back to their families with no tumors in the brain. I hope so. So uh, many people really complain uh, of back pain and neck pain. Uh, so what uh, what causes uh, what causes uh, really let both happen? This is another topic. Okay, we're talking about pain in the back and the neck, or mm -hmm. pain in the spine. Of course. The spine, there are blocks of vertebrae, bony vertebrae, like so blocks this of... The spine pain differs than back pain. Back pain has many causes, of course. Uh, but the most common cause of back pain is that is related to the spine, the vertebral column. The blocks of bone that is carrying the, the body, the carrying the weight of the body, with all the musculature surrounding it. The most common cause of back pain is muscle spasm. Mm. From sitting for long periods, carrying heavy objects, mm -hmm. being overweight, or walking for long, uh, long distances. This causes cramps or mus muscle cramps. Mm -hmm. And this is the most common cause of back pain that is related to the spine. Other causes like the loin pains that occurs in patients with renal problems, kidney problems, kidney stones like that, or, uh, or have problems in their GIT. But I'm talking about the pain that's related to the spine. Mm -hmm. uh, the most common cause of spinal back pain is muscle spasm or muscle cramps. So here's the question again, uh, when exactly the patient should take it serious and consult a neurosurgeon? Amazing. Mm -hmm. If you have normal muscle spasm, this muscle spasm can, uh, can, uh, can be relieved by muscle relaxants, analgesics, bed rest, and that's all. Mm -hmm. But if pain persists more than three days while you're relaxing and you're taking your medications... Then you should consult. More than three days, you should consult a spine surgeon and mm -hmm. neurosurgeon. Or if the pain is not just in the back or in the neck, the pain now radiates to the upper limb, mm -hmm. the pain radiates to your legs. So this is not just back pain. This mm -hmm. is pain radiating to the limbs. There could be uh, a compression on the neural structure, compression on the nerves. Mm -hmm. Or if it's not just pain now, you have pain in the neck and in the upper limb and there is weakness in the upper limb. You, can, you cannot comb your hair. You cannot get th uh, objects from uh, uh, higher. Or if you have weakness in your legs, you cannot uh, 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 take the stairs up or, uh, up or down. You feel that there's weakness in the leg. So it's not just not just pain in the back. It's pain in the back that's uh, um, for more than three days. Pain that's radiating to the lower limbs uh, or the upper limbs, or that's accompanied by weakness. In this case, you have to consult a spine surgeon. You have to consult a neurosurgeon. That's great. So as we heard much about the new techniques um, that take place in such kind of surgeries, uh, spine surgeries. Uh, I would like to tell us more about those techniques. Yes, spine surgeries actually have not good reputation because of lots of 
complications that could happen in patients who do not really require surgery. Mm -hmm. We have to know that 80% of patients with spine problems, mm -hmm. they can be treated without surgeries. Just medications, physiotherapy, lifestyle modification, and the pain is gone. Everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. But there are 20% of patients who really uh, uh, should have surgical intervention. Surgical intervention is, uh, the aim of surgery is to decompress any neurological uh, uh, problem. Mm -hmm. When the patient has pain in his up upper limbs, when the patient has weakness in the upper limbs, his nerves may be compressed by, for example, a disc prolapse or by uh, uh, any pathology in the spine. Surgery should be done to decompress this nerve so that it can return back to action. So the pain could be relieved and the motor power could be regained mm -hmm. once again. Patients who do not seek surgery in this case, they will end to a uh, lost limb. The limb will no longer mm -hmm. move, will no longer feel sensation. So surgery has a role in cases that really require surgery. If you do not require surgery and you perform surgery, this is disaster. And if you do require surgery and you do not do the surgery, this is another disaster. Mm -hmm. So what's right? If you have back problem relating to your limbs, if you have weakness or pain, go and see your neurosurgeon go and check your spine surgeon who will do your, your MRI or other x-rays to detect where's the problem, but take care. Most of the cases, surgery will not be required. In most of the cases, treatment is just medication, lifestyle modification. But if you require surgery, there are many, many new techniques with minimally invasive techniques, small incisions, and all your spine, problem, all, all your spine problems can be corrected. At the end, I thank you so much for your presence and it was just a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and be waiting for more A New Doctors, the best ever on Dr. El Arab. Thank you and see you later. Bye.